Hello, everyone. Welcome to NASA's training on Title II of the Code of Federal Regulations. My name is Chris Morgia, and I serve as a senior analyst in NASA's Office of Procurement, Procurement Management, and Policy Division. The training consists of four modules, each focusing on various aspects of Title II of the Code of Federal Regulations, or 2 CFR. It is intended for entities applying for NASA grant and cooperative agreements, as well as those already in receipt of a NASA grant or cooperative agreement. It is important to note that at the time of this recording, which is late September 2023, the Office of Management and Budget, or OMB, is in the process of revising federal grant regulations discussed in this training. Therefore, some of the information in this training may become out of date once OMB releases their revised regulations, and grant and cooperative agreement applicants and recipients should always ensure that they are adhering to the most recent regulations. The train, training is divided into four modules and a summary section. The modules are 1. The Code of Federal Regulations, or CFR, 2. Subtitle A of the CFR, which is titled OMB Guidance for Grants and Agreements, 3. Part 200 of Subtitle A, Uniform Administrative Requirements, Cost Principles, and Audit Requirements, and 4. Subtitle B, Federal Agency Requirements for Grants and Cooperative Agreements. This training then concludes with a summary of lessons learned. Module 1 focuses on the overall structure and content of the Code of Federal Regulations. At the completion of this first module, you should have a better understanding of the Code of Federal Regulations and its structure, the two grant-related subtitles within 2 CFR, and why the regulations matter to you and your entity. The Code of Federal Regulations, or CFR, is a codification of the general and permanent rules published in the Federal Register by the, by the departments and agencies of the federal government. It is divided into 50 titles that represent broad areas subject to federal regulation. For example, Title 11 of the CFR pertains to federal elections. Title 50 deals with wildlife and fisheries. Title 2, which is the subject of this training, pertains to grants and cooperative agreements. Each title is divided into subtitles, which are further divided into parts that cover specific regulatory areas. We'll discuss relevant subtitles and parts in this module. The CFR is publicly available at ecfr.federalregister.gov. This graphic illustrates how the grant-related regulations in the CFR are organized. As previously mentioned, the CFR contains 50 titles related to broad areas of federal regulation. Title II specifically focuses on federal grants and cooperative agreements. Title II is, the, is then subdivided into two subtitles, A and B, which pertain to regulations developed by the Office of Management and Budget and those developed by grant funding federal agencies. This training focuses on the parts of 2 CFR subtitle A that are most pertinent to NASA. Those parts are 2 CFR 25, which is titled Universal Identifier and System for Award Management, 2 CFR 170, which is titled Reporting Subaward and Executive Compensation Information, and 2 CFR 200, which is titled Uniform Administrative Requirements, Cost Principles, and Audit Requirements for Federal Awards. Subtitle B contains regulations that have been developed by 32 different grant-making federal agencies and departments. This course will focus on one part in Subtitle B that NASA developed, namely 2 CFR Part 1800, which is titled Uniform Administrative Requirements, Cost Principles, and Audit Requirements for Federal Awards. We'll discuss each one of those parts more in depth on the forthcoming slides. Okay, so. The regulations in 2 CFR are important because they help to ensure consistent and uniform government-wide government -wide policies and procedures for managing grants and cooperative agreements issued by federal agencies. Uniform regulations help to reduce award recipient administrative burden and the risk of waste, fraud, and abuse while delivering better performance on behalf of the American people. The regulations also ensure that federal agencies and award recipients comply with relevant statutory requirements.
Module 2. So Module 2 focuses on select parts of 2 CFR subtitle A. At the completion of this module, you will have a better understanding of certain parts listed in Title II subtitle A and how they impact NASA grants and cooperative agreements. Please note that this course does not cover all applicable parts of subtitle A. If you wish to view all that are applicable, visit ecfr.federalregister.gov. As mentioned in Module 1, Subtitle A is developed and maintained by OMB, and its regulations are applicable to all federal grant-making agencies, including NASA. The regulations in Subtitle A became effective on December 26, 2014, and the OMB implemented updates and revisions to the regulation for the first time in November 2020. At the time of this training, OMB is working on additional revisions to 2, 2 CFR that we, we, we expect to become effective sometime in 2024. Understanding the various parts within Subtitle A is important because they contain regulations that pertain to reporting requirements, award terms and conditions, and other award recipient responsibilities. We'll discuss, we'll discuss each in this training. QCFR Part 25, which is titled Universal Identifier and System for Award Management, establishes the requirement that all federal award recipient entities obtain a unique entity identifier, or UEI, and register within the System for Award Management, or SAM.gov. UEIs are unique numbers assigned to entities doing business with the federal government. Applicants are required to provide their UEI every time they submit an application for funding. The requirement for entities to register in SAM.gov allows agencies to view their basic business information and to ensure that entities are not excluded from doing business with the government. Applicants must also register with SAM.gov prior to submitting an award application, and they must maintain SAM registration while they have an active award. QCFR Part 170 which is titled Reporting Subaward and Executive Compensation Information, establishes requirements for federal agencies to report their awards to a public-facing repository and for award recipients to report their subawards and executives' compensation. Per this part, NASA must report all awards that equal or exceed the micro-purchase threshold, which is currently $10,000, to usaspending.gov. This facilitates transparency and allows the public to view award-related data. Award recipients have two requirements under 2 CFR 170. First, recipients that issue subawards equal to or exceeding $30,000 must report those subawards to the Federal Funding Accountability and Transparency Act Subaward Reporting System, or FSRS at fsrs.gov. Information reported to the site is ultimately made available on usaspending.gov. Second, recipients must report the compensation of each of its five most highly paid executives if the recipients receive, one, awards that are equal to or greater than $30,000, two, 80% or more of their annual gross revenue comes from federal contracts or financial assistance, or three, they receive $25 million or more in annual gross revenue from contracts or financial assistance. Module 3. So Module 3 addresses Title II of the Code of Federal Regulations, Part 200, or 2 CFR 200, which contains the most requirements for federal agencies and award recipients. At the completion of this module, you should have a better understanding of the most significant regulations in 2 CFR 200 and how the regulations impact NASA's grant and cooperative agreement recipients. 2 CFR 200, titled Uniform Administrative Requirements, Cost Principles, and Audit Requirements for Federal Awards, is the primary regulation governing federal grants and cooperative agreements. Its purpose is to streamline guidance, reduce administrative burden on award recipients, and guard against fraud, waste, and abuse of federal funds. Prior to its release, OMB organized grant regulations into several circulars, each focusing on a different topic. 2 CFR 200 supersedes 
those circulars and combines them into one cohesive document. NASA and its award recipients are required to adhere to the regulations in 2 CFR 200. These regulations help to ensure that NASA's awards are achieving their goals and objectives and that NASA and its recipients are accountable to the American taxpayer. Two CFR 200 is organized into six subparts. We'll discuss each of them on the forthcoming slides. As its title states, subpart A spells out acronyms and defines key terms that are used throughout the regulation. For example, it defines commonly, commonly used terms such as grant agreement and recipient, as well as key financial terms such as acquisition cost and indirect costs. These definitions provide federal agencies and award recipients with a shared understanding of terms and concepts and facilitate consistent interpretation of the regulation. Subpart B, General Provisions, outlines the purpose of 2 CFR 200, exceptions to the regulations, and universal requirements for federal agencies and award recipients. Overall, it's meant to establish uniform regulations governing grants and cooperative agreements for federal agencies to ensure that all agencies are adhering to similar regulations. 2 CFR 200 prohibits agencies from imposing additional or inconsistent requirements unless they are approved by OMB or required by federal statute, regulation, or executive order. Subpart B also describes the regulation's applicability. It notes that subparts A through F are applicable to non-federal entities that carry out federal awards as recipients or sub-recipients. Subpart B also includes two important requirements for federal agencies and award recipients. First, Section 200.112 requires all award recipients to disclose potential conflicts of interest, or COI, to their awarding agency or pass-through entity in accordance with the awarding agency's policy. NASA's COI disclosure policy can be found in the NASA Grant and Cooperative Agreement Manual, or GCAM. Second, Section 200.113 requires award applicants and recipients to disclose violations of criminal law involving fraud, bribery, or gratuity violations potentially affecting the award to their award issuing agency. So Part C provides instructions and requirements for activities that take place during the pre award phase of the award life cycle which is when agencies plan their programs, solicit applications, and issue their awards. We'll take a closer look at several key sections of the subpart. In addition to the requirement in subpart C to design effective programs, section 200.203 requires agencies to notify the public of their programs in the Federal Assistance Listing System, which is maintained by the U.S. General Services Administration and located at SAM.gov. The listings describe a program's purpose, goals, objectives, projected total amount of funding available, and general eligibility requirements for awards issued under a specific assistance listing. NASA currently has eight active assistance listings in SAM.gov as listed on the screen. Those eight assistance listings are science, aeronautics, exploration, space operations, Office of STEM engagement, Safety, Security, and Mission Services, Space Technology, and congr Congressionally Directed Programs. Section 200.204, which is titled Notice of Funding Opportunities, or NOFOs, requires that agencies publicly announce funding opportunities for discretionary grants and cooperative agreements. All NOFOs, regardless of the program type, are required to include standard information, such as the description of the federal program, who is eligible for the funding, and the criteria agencies will use to evaluate proposals. All NASA NOFOs are published in grants.gov and INSPIRES 
for at least 60 days. And INSPIRES is the NASA Solicitation and Proposal Integrated Review and Evaluation System. To ensure that all agencies issue standardized award documents, Subpart C, Section 200.211, outlines all information that must be contained in grant and cooperative agreement documents. The required information includes a description of award performance goals, general award information, and terms and conditions. The full text of NASA's award terms and conditions can be found in the GCAM Appendix D, which is titled Award Terms and Conditions, and Appendix E, which contains additional terms and conditions that apply to certain grants and cooperative agreements. Subpart D of 2 CFR 200 provides instructions and requirements for activities that take place after an award has been issued, known as the post-award phase of the award life cycle. We will take a closer look at several of its key sections. To ensure that award recipients have the processes and procedures in place to adequately manage federal funds, Section 200.302 requires recipients to establish a financial management system and written procedures for certain financial activities. The recipient's financial system must provide for the effective control over and accountability for all funds, property, and other assets. Recipients must maintain written procedures for federal payments that minimize the time elapsing between the transfer of funds from the federal agency to the recipient and the disbursement by the recipient. Recipients must also maintain procedures for determining the allowability of costs in accordance with 2 CFR 200's cost principles, which will be discussed later in this course. While an award is being implemented, recipients may find that they need to alter certain aspects of the award for a variety of reasons. Modifying an award after it has been issued is allowable. However, per subpart D, section 200.308, recipients must request prior approval from the awarding agency for certain modifications, such as those listed on the screen. At NASA, Recipients must obtain prior approval for the reasons listed in Section 200.308 by submitting a request to their cognizant grant officer. The grant officer for a NASA award can be found on the awards cover sheet, also known as the NASA Form 1687 or NF-1687. To ensure that recipients are achieving the goals and objectives of their awards, expending federal funds appropriately, recipients must adhere to the post-award reporting requirements in subpart D of 2 CFR 200. Per section 200.328, agencies must require recipients to submit financial reports, known as Standard Form or SF-425. NASA requires all recipients to submit their SF-425s in the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Payment Management System also known as PMS. For section 200.329, agencies must require recipients to report on program performance. NASA requires that all award recipients utilize the Research Performance Progress Report, or RPPR, data elements for their performance reports. The data elements can be found in the GCAM. If an award recipient fails to comply with federal statutes, regulations, or the terms and conditions of an award, agencies may impose additional terms and conditions on the award recipient or take corrective actions. For section 200.339, agencies may take one or more of the actions shown in response to noncompliance. The remedies that NASA may take in the event of noncompliance in include temporarily withholding cash payments, disallowing all or part of the cost of an activity or action, wholly or 
partly suspending or terminating an award, initiating the suspension or debar debarment proceedings, withholding federal awards for the project or program, or taking other remedies that may be legally available. So part E of 2 CFR 200, which is titled Cost Principles, provides guidance regarding the costs that award recipients can and cannot charge to an award. We'll discuss several of its key sections. Costs that may be charged to a federal award must be allowable, reasonable, and allocable. A cost is allowable if it is necessary and reasonable for the performance of the award and allocable to that award. The cost must also conform to any other applicable requirements in 2 CFR 200 or the award's terms and conditions. A cost is reasonable if, in its nature and amount, it does not exceed that which would be incurred by a prudent person under the circumstances prevailing at the time the decision was made to incur the cost. A cost is allocable to an award if the goods or services involved are incurred specifically for the award, benefit the federal award, and the work of the recipient, and is necessary to the overall operation of the recipient. After receiving an award from NASA, recipients may begin incurring costs that are outlined in their approved budget. For certain costs, recipients will need to obtain prior written approval from NASA if those costs are not listed in the award's budget. Such items include, but are not limited to, what's shown on this slide, including equipment, compensation, pre-award costs, real property costs, and certain travel costs. The costs incurred on a federal award can be classified as either direct costs or indirect costs. There is no universal rule for the classifications, and depending on the circumstance, a cost may be considered direct in one situation and indirect in another. Direct costs, according to 2 CFR subpart E section 200.413, are those that can be specifically identified with a particular final cost objective, such as a federal award, or that can be direct, directly assigned relatively easily to such activities with a high degree of accuracy. Typical direct costs include the compensation for employees who work on a specific award, their fringe benefits, and the costs and materials required to implement activities supported by the award. Indirect costs are defined as costs incurred for a common or joint purpose benefiting more than one cost objective and not readily assignable to the cost objectives specifically benefited. Per section 200.414, indirect costs can be categorized as either facilities or administration costs. Facilities costs include depreciation or interest on debt associated with buildings, equipment, and capital improvements. Administration costs include general expenses such as clerical and administrative assistance, general office equipment, rent, and utilities. The total amount of indirect costs charged to an award is determined by, by an indirect cost rate which is expressed as a percentage of direct cost rates. Recipients can use one of two types of indirect rates. The first is called a Negotiated Indirect Cost Rate Agreement, or NICRA. A NICRA is an indirect rate that recipients negotiate with their cognizant agency, which is typically the agency that provides the most federal funds to the recipient. All federal agencies must accept a recipient's NICRA, and cannot ask the recipient to reduce that NIGRA if they have one. The second type of indirect rate is the de minimis rate. If recipient does not have a current NIGRA, then they may elect to charge a de minimis rate of 10% of modified total direct costs to their award. Recipients do not have to provide documentation to, to support the use of a de minimis rate.
Subpart E of 2 CFR 200 provides general provisions for selected items of cost, which is essentially a list of more than 50 different allowable and unallowable costs. There are a number of costs that are always unallowable, including, but not limited to, what's listed on the slide here. And those costs that are pretty much always unallowable are alcoholic beverages, costs incurred by institutions of higher education for alumni activities, contributions and donations from the recipient to other entities, and costs of memberships in any country, social, or dining club, as well as any organization whose primary purpose is lobbying. There are also certain costs that are allowable in some instances and unallowable in other instances. For example, entertainment costs are generally unallowable. However, they may be charged to an award if the costs have a programmatic purpose and are approved by the awarding agency. So part F of 2 CFR 200, which is titled Audit Requirements, describes audit requirements and related roles and responsibilities for agencies and award recipients. As with other subparts, we'll focus on several of its key sections. Per subpart F, section 200.501, audit requirements, any state, local government, Indian tribe, institution of higher education, or nonprofit organization that expends more than $750,000 or more in federal award funds in their fiscal year must have a single audit performed for that year. Recipients expending less than $750,000 are not required to obtain a single audit. However, they must make records available for review or audit by the federal awarding agency, pass-through entity, or the Government Accountability Office, or GAO. A single audit is an organization-wide review designed to determine whether financial statements are presented fairly and if the entity has the internal controls in place to ensure compliance with statutes, federal regulations, and award terms and conditions. For sections 200.508 through 200.512, award recipients have several responsibilities when it comes to single audits. First, if the recipient is required to obtain a single audit, they must procure audit services. The cost of a single audit is allowable and may be charged to a, re to a recipient's federal award with grant officer prior approval. Second, the recipient must prepare appropriate financial statements, including a schedule of expenditures for the auditor. Third, the recipient is responsible for follow-up and corrective action on all audit findings. Finally, once the audit is complete, the recipient must ensure that their single audit report is made publicly available by posting it to the Federal Audit Clearinghouse. For 2 CFR 200.513, NASA has several responsibilities in the single audit process. NASA must ensure that audits are completed and that reports are received in a timely manner, provide technical advice and counsel to auditees and auditors as requested, and follow up on audit findings to ensure, the, to ensure that the recipient takes appropriate and timely corrective action. NASA reviews recipient single audit reports determines if the reports contain findings, and works to ensure that the recipient is taking appropriate corrective action. Sections 200.514 through 520 outline auditors' responsibilities when conducting single audits. In general, auditors must determine whether the auditee's financial statements are presented fairly in all material respects in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. They must perform procedures to obtain an understanding of internal control over federal programs and test those internal controls. They must also determine if the auditee has complied with federal statutes, regulations, and the terms and conditions of federal award, and provide a report detailing re relevant findings and opinions.
So now we'll move on to module four. In module four, we'll discuss the sub we'll discuss subtitle B of Title II of the Code of Federal Regulations, which contains NASA's regulations for grants and cooperative agreements. At the completion of Module 4, you should have a better understanding of NASA's specific regulations found in 2 CFR and how these regulations impact NASA's grants and cooperative agreement recipients. The regulations in Title II, Subtitle B, are developed and maintained by various federal awarding agencies. NASA's award specific regulations can be found in Title II, Subtitle B, Parts 1800 through 1899. This section will discuss NASA regulations that appear in Subtitle B, Part 1800. So 2 CFR 200 requires all award issuing agencies to implement the regulations therein by publishing codified regulations of their own. NASA has codified the regulations in 2 CFR 200 by issuing 2 CFR 1800, which states that NASA will adhere to 2 CFR with a few exceptions. The most notable exceptions pertain to 2 CFR 200's applicability and how federally owned and exempt property is vested. Section 1800.3, which is titled Applicability, states that 2 CFR 200 subparts A through F apply to states, local governments, Indian tribes, institutions of higher education, and nonprofit organizations. Foreign, organ foreign organizations, on the other hand, must comply only with subparts A through E, and for-profit organizations must comply only with subparts A through D. It is important to note that for recipients who are for-profit organizations, the cost principles in 2 CFR 200 subpart E are replaced by the Federal Acquisition Regulations at 48 CFR parts 30 and 31. Section 1800.312, titled Federally Owned and Exempt Property, states that NASA has statutory authority to exempt CERN award recipients from the property management requirements in 2 CFR Section 200.312, Federally Owned and Exempt Property. For Section 1800.312, nonprofit institutions of higher education and nonprofit organizations who pri whose primary purpose is conducting scientific research a full title to tangible personal property purchased with NASA funds without further obligation to NASA. As mentioned elsewhere in this course, NASA has incorporated the requirements in Title II, subtitles A and B, into the GCAM, which is NASA's agency-wide grants policy document. It provides additional context and instructions regarding these federal regulations to facilitate compliance across the agency. Entities that receive a NASA grant or cooperative agreement agree to comply with the regulations in Title II by signing NASA Form 1687, which explicitly states that 2 CFR 1800 and thereby 2 CFR 200 is applicable to the award. Moreover, all awards include terms and conditions in full text or by reference that inform the award recipient of the requirement to comply with the regulations in Title II. Finally, entities certify that they will comply with all applicable federal regulations when they register in SAM.gov, which is a requirement for any entity doing business with the federal government. Let's do a brief recap of what was covered in this course. In this course, you've been introduced to the Code of Federal Regulations and its structure, the two grant-related subtitles within it, and why the regulations are important to you and your entity. You also learned about two relevant parts of Subtitle A and how the parts impact grants and cooperative agreements at NASA. You become familiar with the significance of Part 200 and how its regulations impact NASA's management of grants and cooperative agreements, and how NASA's specific regulations found in Subtitle B also impact NASA's grants and cooperative agreements management. Thank you very much for joining our training today on an introduction to 2CFR. 
If you have further questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to NASA's Grants Policy and Compliance team, which is situated within NASA's Office of Procurement at the URL provided on this screen. Thank you very much and have a good day.